Hey y'all, it's your girl Nana and Nayi. This topic is a heavy one. And it honestly made me really sad. Um before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe and let's get straight into the video. Now the documentary is called Quiet on Set and it was premiered on Investigation Discovery Channel. It featured a select few of the child actors and also staff members who worked with Dan Schneider and with Nickelodeon. I don't want to give you guys too many spoilers because I still want you to check it out. Um, but oh, I'm going to admit there's going to be a couple of spoils in here. So if you don't want me to ruin the show for you, then, you know, go ahead and watch the show. I mean, this, um, the documentary and then come back and watch this video. The documentary featured cast members like Leon Frierson, Drake Bell, Giovanni Samuels, Brian Hearns, Katrina Johnson, Raquel Lee, Kyle Sullivan, Son Nicholas, to name a few. There were people who were also talked about that weren't necessarily featured um, as like speaking in the documentary, but they were spoken about and their pictures were featured. And, you know, people that knew them spoke about them and family members and things of that nature. In the documentary, they spoke about things like um, the inappropriate inside jokes that were featured on shows like All That, iCarly, Victorious, Keenan and Kel. And also they spoke about, you know, inappropriate behavior behind the set. Um, not only inappropriate behavior, but um, violent and aggressive behavior by Dan Schneider. And um, people that worked in the staff spoke about how horrible it felt to work with Dan Schneider and how aggressive he was with the way that he ran the studio. I also appreciated the parents coming out and speaking about the part that they played, like, you know, the ones that felt comfortable being featured, of course, because we have to realize that there were some parents that like enabled these inappropriate things to keep happening. And there were certain parents that were deemed, quote unquote, difficult by um, trying to speak on the things that they didn't like that was happening with their child. And when these parents were deemed too difficult, it, all, it often put a rift in the relationship with their child. And I also appreciate them talking about Drake Bell's father. And if you watch the documentary, you'll see what happened to Drake Bell, how he was um, unfortunately assaulted, um, essayed by a man named Brian Peck, who worked behind the scenes um, on the TV show, um, Amanda Show and um, Drake Bell, um, Drake and Josh. So there were so many things that were talked about. Um, also, Amanda Bynes having such a close, like, strange relationship with Dan Schneider. And it wasn't only Amanda Bynes. It was Dan Schneider had a close relationship. Um, and not only Dan Schneider, but these other adults had such close relationships with these kids. And, you know, it was very inappropriate. And I feel like nobody spoke about that enough back then. But I'm glad that they're talking about it now. Drake... Um, you know, his father was paying attention so much that he noticed things about Brian Peck that, you know, were red flags. And I do feel like his mom kind of put a blind eye to it because if you watch the documentary, you'll see that, you know, his mom had many times to stop certain things. And I feel like she just didn't. And maybe she was hushed a certain way. And, you know, money and things like that you know it unfortunately made certain parents let things happen and I also feel the same way about um Amanda Bynes parents and a lot of these children's parents you know they were okay with a lot of things that they shouldn't have been okay with and unfortunately if they spoke up they were you know the villain in the situation which is very unfortunate now it's those parents that I can feel bad for but then there's parents like MJ. Now there was a mom named MJ, I believe, and her I think her daughter's name was Brandy. And she was apparently receiving emails from one of the producers or directors on the show on um Nickelodeon. 
because her daughter was a potential was in the potential of being a cast member on one of their shows. He was emailing her explicit pictures. And when she caught that, the mom decided not to call the police because she said that they didn't want, she didn't want the police to think that she was a bad parent. Now I'm going to show you guys a TikToker explaining this situation a little bit better than I can. So you guys can take a look. I think I'm a bad parent because I allowed her to talk to this person. I struggle with this and I finally told myself I can't call the police. All I can do is make sure I keep her far away from him. And with this documentary, I have seen so many people have similar experiences and it's just disgusting that the people who are supposed to protect us failed us. It's really the fact that she was confident enough to speak on this documentary and say what she said so confidently. And it's like, you're basically letting us know that you're not a good parent because what you should have done was call the police. You shouldn't be worried about your reputation and whether you'd look like a bad or good parent. And you should more so look out for the safety of your child, right? I feel like Brandy's mom and Drake Bell's father are total opposites because um, if you see in the docu documentary, Joe Bell spoke about how he always felt that Brian Peck was suspicious. And as soon as he was, um, Drake's father was pushed out as manager, he was able to do all of the horrible things that he did to Drake in the long run. There was racism talked about in the documentary. Um, a cast member, Brian, at the tender age of 10 or I think 11 years old, was told that his skin color was the same as charcoal black. When he was getting dressed for one of the sets on all that, he talked about how he was criticized for his skin color and told that the skin, because he had on a suit that was supposed to be the same color as his skin, that it should have been charcoal black. And he spoke about the racism. And also Giovanni, who was also on all that, she spoke about how, you know, being the only black girl, being the token black girl, a lot of the black people on these sets spoke about how they weren't really paid attention to at all. Like you'd notice that, you know, a lot of the white cast members spoke about how close of a relationship they had with Dan Schneider and stuff like that. But Dan Schneider never really had those kind of relationships with the other black kids on set and it's honestly really unfortunate that he was allowed to discriminate and everybody turned a blind eye to that i also wanted to go ahead and show you guys um this clip it doesn't have anything to do with racism but it does go back to you know the inappropriate um things that the kids were made to do the inside jokes that were a little bit too like you know not made the for retards. kids you guys go ahead and check this i mean out. i was just a growing boy trying to you know fit into my body and it was just out there for everyone to kind of look at and judge me or, you know, I just felt very exposed. So one week we get a script. There's a new character for me on all that named Noseboy. Naturally, I'm in a superhero costume, which is just tights and underwear. You know, what was different about this, they, they gave me a prosthetic nose, like an enlarged nose, and they put this same nose on the costume. I can't do big nose. What are your special powers? You can't help but notice that it looks like penis and testicles on my shoulders. This is your new sex. I'm allergic to asteroids! <laughs> and the joke in that sketch is effectively a shot joke. It's a shot joke for children. I'm just looking back at it, it's just very strange. Frankly, it was just uncomfortable. In the, the moments to myself, you would just be thinking like, hey, this is what we got to do to be on the show, to stay in the cast. If your jaw was on the floor, so was mine. Like, shout out to Leon Thompson. Shout out to all of these kids that felt like if they said no or refused to do these kind of humiliating jokes and scenes that they would lose their jobs at such young ages. You know, oh gosh, you guys. Watching this documentary, I was just like, wow, jaw on the floor, jaw on the floor. Um, I want to show you guys another clip of um, Kyle. I think his name is Kyle Sullivan, who was on all that. He's going to talk about, um, you know, the guy who unfortunately sexually assaulted, well, S.A.D. 
Drake Bell. Um, he's going to talk about a day when they went to his house for a barbecue. Um, you guys just go ahead and watch this. And a half years in, everyone went to Brian's house for a barbecue and a little off. He had a room that was just dedicated to like vintage toys and comic books. And he converted his garage into like a planet. I noticed a painting in the room that stuck out to me because it had nothing to do with Planet of the Apes. It was of a birthday clown holding balloons. And Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around and on the back it said, to Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. It was a self-portrait of serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. At this point, I'm like 14. I didn't know like the details, but I knew like this guy's a serial killer who like killed a lot of young men and boys. My instinct was like, everyone has to see this. And so like all the parents and the kids come into the room and then Brian presents the painting again. And Brian actually developed a pen pal relationship with John. He kept like this pile of letters and photos from John Wayne Gacy in his nightstand next to his bed. And he like pulls them out and starts showing them to me. Your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you've known them for that long, even in the face of like this really bad sign. It was one of those like classic failures of group psychology. It's the craziest thing to think people like this had so many celebrities that you guys won't even believe sending in letters so that the judge will give him grace. Someone like Brian Peck, who is an SA or two kids. And when they raided, actually, it was another guy, um, Jason Handy. I believe his name was Jason Handy. And he was actually the one who um, emailed MJ's daughter those inappropriate photos. <clears throat> that was the one that I talked about earlier. They raided his house and found a bunch of child pee, if you know what I mean. And it's like these people were working at a kid's network around kids. Got it. Going back to Dan Schneider, you know, it's really unfortunate that he was able to get away with so many things behind the scenes and on the scenes with all of these inappropriate jokes that he displayed, which I'm going to show you guys in a video um, after, you know, I talk about this. I'm going to I'm going to show you a clip of um, some of the scenes that I felt were inappropriate that I'm now realizing. And I knew back then because a lot of us did. I'm not realizing it was just out of pocket. And, um, you know, eventually Dan Snyder was reported by um, people in the workplace um, for all of the things that he was doing that was wrong, like making women give him massages, one to say the least, being very disrespectful and rude to kids and adults on, um, on scenes, um, behind the scenes and on scenes. And so, yeah, you guys go ahead and check out this video of um, some suspicious things that should have been stopped take a look i show you guys that i wanted to say that a lot of the inappropriate and out-of-pocket stuff that i felt like was the worst in my opinion was a lot of things that i saw on victorious and icarly but you guys go ahead and take a look is that oh yeah this is a copy of the costume that tony walker black wore in your favorite movie the scissoring whoa what do you eat salad sometimes Figures. You let me know. Oh man, my uvula got stuck between that hamster's toes. See? That could never happen because your uvula is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here. So there's no way you could get it stuck between a hamster's toes. And honestly, what was Sentence even the three. point of this? <laughs> I'm soaking wet. Quick, somebody bring me the ocean. No one would ever say that. Why? Because if you were soaking wet, and you're upset about it, the last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you oh ever tried gosh, to get your whole big tongue your mouth? Oh my gosh, my ears have forsaken Check me. Check this out. Sometimes like, I wonder me, if you can get juice from a potato. Is it possible? 
possible for a teenage girl to drink water upside down? This one was the worst one, in my opinion. Mm, I'm thirsty. It's not possible. This has been me in a video. Honestly, just terrible, just terrible. Let me go ahead and show you guys this video that I didn't even realize of um, Liz Gills and her now husband who is a lot older than her and also was working with her on the set while she was on Victorious when she was a teenager. Take a look. Out of Victorious, it makes Elizabeth's relationship with her husband who worked on the set even more alarming. So her husband, if you don't know, it was like the music composer for that show, Sam and Cat. And he's worked with Dan Schneider for years. They're very good friends. Now he saw her growing up. So he saw her on set when she was like 15, 16. And she claimed she was always infatuated with him and always had a crush on him, but that nothing happened until she turned 18. Now, after watching the documentary last night, is that true? I don't know. I always mention, because he's in his 50s, age gap relationships are weird when you knew that person as a teen. It's different if you're like 27 and you met when you're 27, you're 50 or whatever. But no, he worked with her on the show when all this stuff was going on, right? Not to mention he's super cool with Dan Schneider. Now, Elizabeth doesn't talk on the documentary at all. Actually, no one from Victoria speaks out, but they do show the clips. And you can argue that Victoria's probably had the most amount of, wow, that's a kid's show and that's in there. So, wow. Honestly, just horrible and like honestly like mad suspicious of the things that like went down you guys have to watch this documentary i was able to watch the documentary for free i did a seven day free trial on investigation discovery app so you guys can go ahead and download that app do the seven day free trial and then you'll be able to watch the documentary the same way that i was you guys make sure to check it out it was very informative i would want to share some more information with you guys but i don't want to spoil the whole thing it's just so much there's honestly so much more information from what i gave you in this video there's like double of it so you guys make sure you check it out let me know what you feel about this video in the comments um god bless all of these these people these kids and everybody who went through these horrible things especially drake bell who was unfortunately sa dur during his time on this kids network um you know i honestly wonder what josh peck has to say but i digress um good luck to everyone all the cast members all the people behind the scenes and everybody who was you know brave enough to come out and speak about these things because i know it was not easy for them you guys make sure that you like and subscribe let me know how you felt about this video comment down below and give me your insight on how you felt about the documentary if you were able to watch it if you're not able to watch it let me know how you feel about this video and if you feel like i gave you like the information that you were looking for you know you guys god bless and have a good one later and one more thing before i go when it comes to amanda Bynes, um apparently her and her family refused to speak out on the situation with her and Dan Schneider. Um, apparently, they're saying that she didn't have the same experience. Overall, it seems very suspicious to me, but I want to just say God bless her on her journey as well. And I hope that she's okay, you know, overall. Because obviously, as you guys can see, she's been through a lot. But yeah, like I said, God bless you guys. And um, yeah, bye y'all.